The Lord be with you. Welcome to morning prayer at resurrection as we uh, continue our daily prayer. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O oh, oh, come, let us, let us worship him. O oh, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. O oh, come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship him. Our second psalm this morning is Psalm 34. Those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your voices be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you loves life 
and desires long life to enjoy prosperity. Keep your tongue from evil speaking and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who who do evil to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Our hymn this morning is O Lord, Throughout These Forty Days. It's hymn 99 in Lutheran Book of Worship. Hymn 99. Text is one based on, uh, by a text by Claudia Hernemann, and paraphrased by Gilbert Doan for Lutheran Book of Worship. O Lord, Throughout These Forty Days. O Lord, throughout these forty days, you prayed and kept the fast. Inspire repentance for our sin and free us from our past. You strove with Satan and you won. Your faithfulness endured. Lend us your nerve, your skill, and trust in God's eternal word. Though parched and hungry, yet you prayed and fixed your mind above. So teach us to deny ourselves that we may know God's love. Be with us through this season, Lord, and all our earthly days, that when the final Easter dawns, we join in heaven's praise. The first reading for this day is from the book of Genesis in the 49th and 50th chapters. Then Jacob charged his sons and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field at... Match Pelah, to the east of Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the, fi- with the field from Ephron the Hittite to possess as a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah, 
The field and the cave that is in it were purchased from the Hittites. When Jacob finished charging his sons, he drew up his feet into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. Then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were required for it, for so many are required for embalming. And the Egyptians wept for him seventy days. And when the days of weeping for him were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, I am about to die. In my tomb, which I hewed out for myself in the land of Canaan, there shall you bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up, I pray you, and bury my father. Then I will return. And Pharaoh answered, Go up and bury your father, as he made you swear. So Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his household, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, as well as all the household of Joseph, his brothers, and his father's household. Only their children, their flocks, and their herds were left in the land of Goshen. And there and there went up with him both chariots and horsemen. It was a very great company. And when they came to the threshing fold at Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, they lamented there with a very great and sorrowful lamentation. And he made a mourning for his father seven days. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning on the threshing floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning to the Egyptian. And therefore, the place was named Abel Mizraim. It is beyond the Jordan. Thus his sons did for him as he commanded them. For his sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the land of Machpelah to the east of Mamre, which Abraham bought with the field from Ephron the Hittite to possess as a burying place. After he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who had gone up with him to bury his father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. St. Paul writes, I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions even as I have delivered them to you. But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a woman is her husband. And the head of Christ is God. Any man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head. But any woman who prays or prophesies with her head unveiled dishonors her head. It is the same as if her head were shaven. For if a woman will not veil herself, then she should cut off her hair. But if it is disgraceful for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her wear a veil. For a man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. For man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. That is why a woman ought to have a veil on her head, because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor man of woman. For as woman was made from man, 
so man is now born of woman, and all things are from God. Judge for yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not nature itself teach you that for a man to wear long hair is degrading to him, but if a woman has long hair, it is her pride? For her hair is given to her for a covering. If anyone is disposed to be contentious, we recognize no other practice, nor do the churches of God. But in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you assemble as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And I partly believe it, for there must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you meet together, it is not the Lord's Supper that you eat, for in eating each one goes ahead with his own meal, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment upon himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we should not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are chastened so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brethren, when you come together to, to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together to be condemned. About the other things, I will give directions when I come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. 
He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, by the reverent observance of this Lenten season, prepare the hearts of your faithful people that they may worthily enter upon the mystery of the death and resurrection of Christ and proclaim the greatness of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, bless those who hold office in the governments of our land, that they may do their work in a spirit of wisdom, kindness, and justice. Help them use their authority to serve faithfully and to promote the general welfare through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you set the solitary in families. We commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. Put far from them, we pray, every root of bitterness, the thirst for personal gain, and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, moderation, patience, and godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who have been joined in marriage. Let children and parents have proper guard for one another and kindle fervent love among us all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven,